Hello, brothers and sisters. Brother Trey here again, um, back with another Bible study. Last time we finished off the book of Genesis, with Genesis chapter 50, where uh, Joseph and his brothers went to go bury their father in the, in the land of in the land of Canaan, uh, in the field of Machpelah, and um, the burying place of Ephron the Hittite. And they buried him. They fulfilled the promise that they did to their fa they made to their father. But then, Joseph, then Joseph's brothers were afraid that he would take revenge after their father had died. But no, he said he was going to take, still take care of them and their little ones. And then it just kind of fast forwarded throughout the years. And then Joseph became old in years, and um, he ended up passing away. He was old enough to see his grandchildren and his or his children's children. So uh, he was old enough to say that. And then they died. And then. Uh, they uh, he made it. They made an oath to him, or made it. They made a promise to him, saying that he would um, carry his bones out of Egypt. It says to carry up my bones from hence. And he did, died at a hundred and ten years old, and then he was embalmed and put in a coffin in Egypt. So here we go into the book of Exodus, and this is after the time of Joseph and after the time of famine which was you know long past it's only been it was only seven years of famine so it's been long since past so here we are in the book of Genesis or Exodus sorry been in Genesis too long <laughs> anyway Exodus chapter one and it reads now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt every man in his household came with Jacob they were Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70, 70 souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruit, fruitful, and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them. Now there rose up a new king over Egypt which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold the children, behold the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when they are followed out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set them set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And Egyptians made the and the, the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field, all their service wherein they made them serve, was with rigor. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Sifra, Shifra, and the name of the other was Pua. And he said, Why do you, When you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon those stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him, but if it be a daughter, then she shall live. Uh, but the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the ch men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egypt, Egyptian women, for they are lively and are deli and delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass when the midwives feared God, because of, it became to pass because the midwives feared God and made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born 
you shall cast him into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. So, you know, the rose, you know, the original Pharaoh had passed away because this is many, many years. We don't know how much older uh, the original Pharaoh when Joseph wasn't around, how old he was then. But it's been many years since, and like maybe even the sons don't even know who, who Joseph was or his grandchildren at all. And, uh, you know, they didn't put uh, Joseph's uh, sons in place. So they didn't know Joseph any longer. So uh, there was really no need for Joseph, any Joseph's family anymore, except for in the land of Goshen. So, um, so it first talks about uh, how uh, all, the, all the people that came with Jacob onto Egypt, because Joseph was already there. So um, there rose up a Pharaoh that didn't know Joseph anymore. The new, or the new king, and uh, though he ended up growing, you know the uh, the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied, waxed exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. So he grew. He became frightened. He was, you know, uh, anxious uh, because they were. They were more than the Egyptians were up there. If their enemies came up, they were afraid that they would join with their enemies and overtake the land of Egypt. So I think it was either, you know, maybe it was jealousy or, you know, he became, uh, what do you call it? Um, paranoid? Par it's like paranoia, spirit of fear fell upon him. For a fear, and a, a, par, and a spirit of par, maybe call it a spirit of paranoia, uh, saying that they will overcome them, and not, it's an unnecessary fear that that was not, wasn't necessarily true. He just made it up in his own mind. Maybe it was a uh, lunatic spirit. I mean, he was making things up in his own mind. Um, he was a pessimist or something at the most, um, but. Um, he tried and he tried to make a deal with him. He set taskmasters over him, afflicted him with burdens, and uh, they built treasure cities. And and they uh, the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and and they were even more grieved because of Israel. And the Egyptians uh, and the children of Israel served with rigor. They made them li lives bitter with hard bondage and mortar and brick, and all manners of service of the field. And in all their service they made them serve was with rigor. So, uh, with brick and mortar, uh, bitter, hard bondage, uh, had taskmasters over. So they were hitting them with whips. It was slavery. Whether, uh, like you know, you probably watched the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston, where you know they whipped them, uh, and they um, did made bricks and mortar to build you know the treasure cities and anything else Pharaoh wanted them to build. So they did all manner of service in the field. So it's hard telling, like, you know, they use straw for the brick, for the brick and mortar so, to make the bricks. So they probably were collecting that as well. So, um, so because they become multiplied and they grew exceedingly great, he's the, he, uh, Pharaoh talked to the Hebrew midwives and, uh, said if, if they, if they have a son, kill it. And if they have a daughter, save it alive. But they wouldn't do it because they feared God. And then he asked them why. He said, and I think they basically said that they would they fear they. I would say that they said they feared God and they wouldn't do it. But I didn't punish them. But um, end up um, because they didn't do it. Uh, and it came to pass because the midwives feared God because they did that uh, the Lord made them houses. So He blessed them for saving the men children alive. And then Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born, you shall cast in the river. So kill every man child, right? Every son that's born. I think, I don't know if it was, he said all his people. So, well, they're taking it upon themselves to go throughout the land to kill all the men, the young uh, men, children of, a uh, men, ch man, ch men, children of, uh, is, uh, he, uh, the Hebrew children, or is all. Maybe including Egyptians, but I don't know. If I would think that would be the Israelites because that's who he felt threatened by. So 
that is uh, the end of the chapter. Um, but uh, the same thing is that um, nowadays it's the same thing. That same spirit, the, the spirit of Pharaoh. I mean, I remember um, that's the Old Testament. You remember uh, Herod in the time in the new uh, the New Testament in a book, a book of Luke uh, specifically. I think they had um, they had he had heard about the Deliverer or the Messiah or new king. He heard about the new king, the king of the Jews, because the uh, kings uh, the kings from afar. Uh, had um, come and said, we come to see the new king, the king of the Jews or something. So he became threatened. So that, you know, that's kind of what Pharaoh was going through. He felt threatened by the Israeli, Israelite people. So he, um, you know, they raised up some people to go and kill uh, the men, children, that, and uh, men, children, and um they, uh, you know, did it in Pharaoh's time. They did it in Herod's time because he didn't want any other king besides himself or like or his son, his lineage be. But anyway, um, he felt threatened. And nowadays, um, uh, the enemy still feels threatened by um, the children of God, uh, by, you know, he's... Still threatened by Israel. Why do you think they're being attacked right now? Um, well, one reason uh, he still feels threatened. It's an apple of God's eye. He still wants to attack it. He doesn't like Israel. Satan doesn't. And then that's why Hamas and Hezbollah and whatever country is trying to try and come against it in the, these end times. And um, it's the apple of God's eye. Uh, and then you think about the Christian part of it. And Christ walked in Israel. He didn't like, doesn't like that either. He was, he doesn't like Israel because he was defeated there, right? Christ was in an Israel. Christ defeated him at the cross of Calvary, right? Nor came death, hell, and the grave. Sin was defeated at the cross. That's why he doesn't like it. That's why he feels threatened. And any of us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Like we either we, okay, so either we are you know we're Jew. Uh, he doesn't like us because um, automatically by birth we are the apple of God's eye, right? If we we're if we're raised up in that, but I'm I wasn't, and if we're um, born again believer as a you know a follower of Jesus Christ. We're born again. He doesn't like us either because we are a threat to him being a member of the body of Christ because Jesus Christ gives us power and authority remember he in Acts chapter um, he says um, after you have received the Holy Ghost you have received power he says he gives us power and authority right so he feels threatened so he tries everything he can from us to receive the, from receiving the gospel or from receiving the truth he tries to kill, he tries to stop us when we are babes in Christ from knowing the truth, from, from us being set free. He wants us to be bound by sin. He wants us to die die in our flesh. He wants, wants us to go to hell. Because, you know, He's going to take, he's going down there. He knows he'll only about a short time. So with the book of Revelation, he'll only about a short time. So he's going to do everything he can. He's going to take as many as he can with him, including any, all, any of us that he, he possibly can. Hell wasn't made for us. It was made for him and his angels. And for those demons and for the evil, evil spirits, spirits of the Nephilim and the giants. They were all... Um, it was made for them. And that wasn't made for us. But he caused us to sin. Remember he, the original sin in the, in the garden. So he started to take, trying to take us out from the beginning. From Adam and Eve, he started to take, cause us to sin. Because he had already fallen, I'm guessing by this point. Well, no, he shouldn't have. He didn't, what, he didn't fall. Well, I don't know if he fell or what, but they were tempted 
by the daughters of men by Genesis chapter 6. So it was in between that time, between the garden and Genesis chapter 6. So um, talk about Adam and Eve. I don't think Eve was created till maybe, well, in, in his image he created man and woman, but between Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 6, Eve was created. And, you know, there had to be more women born, so the daughters of men, they found them, found them uh, beautiful, and they end up lying with them and having children somehow. But anyway, uh, yeah, it was meant for the fallen ones and for Satan. So Satan tried to take, try to, you know, be more than God, think of himself more than God, and you know, want worship or something. And uh, so he fell. And Jesus said he fell like lightning from heaven. But anyway, he's trying to be. He hates mankind. He, they, we were made in God's image. Like they were, he didn't like. I don't think he liked the fact that he had to help us, right? So. Apparently, and it just seems like, you know, the sons of, they were made in God's image in a way, or we were made in God's image. Um, but um, you think about it, uh, we were we were given a free will, but apparently the angels were given a free will too, because a third of the angels fell. How did they gave them a choice to follow the Lord and obey, and he gave us that option as well. But anyway, uh, because he fell, he hates us. And we are more worth it because we're given power and authority through Jesus Christ and through the Holy Ghost. Those who are born again have the power and authority. Believers in Jesus Christ have power and authority to, um, you know, uh, those who believe, cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead, um, and, you know, uh, to preach the gospel. He doesn't want anymore to be saved. He doesn't want anymore, you know, we. we we are given that great commission. He's trying to stop us from doing that. So he's doing everything in his power because he's he's already he's already he's already defeated, but he's still trying to take as many as, as down with him as possible. And so we've got to stay in our word, stay in prayer, stay connected to God, stay faithful to the Lord, and be obedient to the Lord. You know, not falling, not falling into temptation because the devil tries to do it, do that by then. He tries to discourage us. That's why, you know, fellowship is important so that we're not discouraged, we're not led astray. Any of that, we can't do this alone. We're not alone because the Lord is with us, but we also can't do it alone because, you know, uh, um, because we need each other. We need, a, we need support. Uh, and the edification, exhortation, and comfort um, through all we're going through, you know, being having fellowship gives us all that. And uh, we're stronger when we're together. Um, and then he also tries to stop our ministry, uh, like before it's birthed, right? When you try to birth a ministry, it, like you, you, yeah, you can minister to others, but like, for like uh, starting a ministry, your own ministry, you know, you are mature enough. I mean, you can share the gospel. You can lay your hands on heel sick and all of that. But like, and then there's this, your destiny and your purpose, which the Lord has called you for, the things that, part of your testament, the things you've been through, you know, you're going to help the same kind of people. And then uh, the Lord raises you up. And then you mature enough in the faith. And then the Lord, you know, trusts you. And trust you enough to begin your ministry, to begin uh, that which he's created you for. Uh, and then uh, he tries to stop it. He's like, it was like, you know, he tries to people stop people from seeing it. Like say you do social media, you try to have people stop you from seeing it. Um, you know, like maybe click off of it, you know, not interact with it, not talk. Not saying that I'm giving it support. Even just some interaction, you know, likes, shares, anything like that. Um, or, you know, uh, maybe financial support. Or, you know, just commenting back saying, hey, I'm praying for you. Uh, he, he had, you know, or, or he gets, people get, excuse me, uh, people get offended by your ministry. And that's like either the spirit, spirit of them or they've got spirit that within them or they get the spirit of offense 
because like the devil likes to stir that spirit up because he hates you he hates the spirit with it the jesus christ and you he hates this holy spirit within you because he knows that with the anointing that's on your life he you can break the yoke off somebody else because you've already been through it so um that's why the devil is trying to stop us uh, physically you know that's why there's abortion because he because he doesn't want anybody to be born again he hate you know mostly he's trying to deceive others he's, he's saying life isn't precious because he hates mankind period uh he tried to he deceived Adam and Eve. That was before they were they walked with God. Then they were created in God's image, so he hated them even then. So that's why you know now he's still trying to have um, babies aborted before they're born, before they have any real impact in the world, and before they learn anything. And then, like he's even threatened to buy them in the womb. That's how powerful we are with our words, with our life. That's how much. We have that much power over the enemy because he's threatened us before, when we're in the mother's womb. He said, but the Lord says he knows us uh, before we, he created us, creates us in the mother's womb. So he knows us before then, and that's why, and that's part of the you know part of the reason why Satan hates him because he knows that part because he knows that the Lord knows us before he knows or before we're created in the mother's womb. But um, yeah, the Satan tries to stop us any chance he gets with it, with any, with any kind of like even, uh, with all of the devil's devices. He tries everything he can, every strategy he can think of. But you know, if we're born again in Jesus Christ, he tries to stop. Our, he tries to stop our ministry. But you know, we're walking in victory already. He's already defeated. So we just know we need to keep fellowshipping, keep moving. Uh, don't let it, his attacks get us down. Um, no matter what coming after us, no, we just need to remember that we're victorious in Jesus Christ. All of God's promises are yes and amen. We are sealed by the blood of the Lamb in Jesus Christ, right? You know, He, God loves us no matter if we mess up. We're still saved, right? So we just got to we, we keep gotta, even got to encourage ourselves. David, King David, encouraged himself often. So we got to be like that and encourage ourselves and, you know, read the word of God, you know, speak it over ourselves, you know, try to encourage ourselves. What, that's what the word of God is for. So we were, we're reminded of the word of God and how good the Lord is and how precious we are in his sight. Get down. How precious we are in his sight and how important we are to the work of the ministry. We can't give up. We got to keep going. It's more than just ourselves. There are, there are more souls out there that are lost. And if they die, then they go to hell and the Satan wins. And he takes them to hell with him. So we got to keep going. Got to keep pushing. So um, don't let, you know, we got to be, keep it, be like the uh, Israel, Israelite people and keep multiplying. And, uh, we have and you know uh, expanding the kingdom of God by sharing the gospel, sharing the lo love of God with everyone. We got to keep going. It's more than us. Uh, we got just got to keep going. Um, can't let him. Um, can't, can't let him keep us down because we're, we're not wrestle. I'll start to remember we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual high places right so uh, keep we gotta keep going keep be encouraged uh, of this message uh the lord loves us you know he's gonna prosper us because we are his people um the enemy's gonna try to attack our finances and you know hinder us from doing anything you know attacking our families attacking uh, those we love because that because he can try like i said he's gonna try anything uh, attack our families, attack our, our, attack our marriages, attack our, uh, our relationship with our children, attack our finances, you know, maybe uh, cause false accusations and maybe get fired from our job, something like that. No, that didn't happen to me, but, uh, or, you know, um, interfere, distract us, interfere with our prayer life, 
because that is a thing that he likes to keep keep us distracted from that. Uh, keep us busy, you know. Busy means um, burden under. It's like an anagram for so I hear a lot is burden under Satan's yoke. You know, keep him busy. We're not be about Father's business. We're about just busy doing something else, burdened by something else. So, um, gotta stay focused. Gotta keep going. It's you know these are the end, the end of day that we're in uh, the end of, we're in the last days. So, damn, dogs trying to get on the table. Um, but we gotta like he's trying to keep us distracted. My dog doing it. He uses anything, right? Our family, our pets, distract us. So, uh, yeah, we gotta keep going. Gotta stay focused. Um, don't lose heart. Don't don't grow weary in well doing. Um, but just keep in, stay in prayer, fast if you feel led to. Stay in your word, um, and make sure you're we're fellowshipping together, encouraging one another. Uh, Lifting each other up in the most holy faith, right? So we just got to keep going. We are a blessed people set apart for his purpose, for the Lord's purposes and glory. For God's glory, not ours. So be encouraged today in Jesus' name.